Northern Cyprus, officially the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, is a self-declared state that comprises the northeastern portion of the island of Cyprus. Recognized only by Turkey, Northern Cyprus is considered by the international community as part of the Republic of Cyprus. Northern Cyprus extends from the tip of the Karpas Peninsula in the northeast, westward to Morpho Bay and Cape Kormakitis, and southward to the village of Lurajina. A buffer zone under the control of the United Nations stretches between northern Cyprus and the rest of the island and divides Nicosia, the island's largest city and capital of both states. The 1974 coup d'état copyright TAT, an attempt to annex the island to Greece, was followed by the Turkish invasion of Cyprus. This resulted in the eviction of much of the north's Greek Cypriot population, the flight of Turkish Cypriots from the south, and the partitioning of the island, leading to a unilateral declaration of independence by the north in 1983. Due to its lack of recognition, northern Cyprus is heavily dependent on Turkey for economic, political and military support. Attempts to reach a solution to the Cyprus dispute have been unsuccessful. Recognizing the need for a resolution, in May 2008 the two sides began another round of negotiations after committing themselves to working towards a bicommunal, bizonal federation with political equality, as defined by relevant Security Council resolutions. The Turkish army maintains a large force in northern Cyprus with its presence supported and approved by the TRNC government which the Republic of Cyprus regards as an illegal occupation force, with its presence denounced in several United Nations Security Council resolutions. Religion Percentage Year History, Ottoman Era The conquest of 1571 of the island by the Ottoman Turks was a liberation for the bulk of the Greek Orthodox population. Indeed, in some areas, such as Lfkara, there had been local risings against the Venetians in support of the Ottoman forces. Serfdom was abolished and the peasant families were given the freehold of the land they had previously worked on. The Orthodox Church was also freed from centuries of control by the Latin hierarchy and its previous tradition of independence reasserted under a revived archbishopric. On the other hand, the Catholic Church of the Crusader and Venetian rulers were expelled. Catholics on the island were given the choice of conversion or exile. Following the defeat of the Venetians in 1571, Lala Mustafa Pasha, the Turkish commander of the land forces in Cyprus, chose, before departing for Istanbul, 12,000 foot soldiers to remain on the island for the formation of the defensive garrison of Famagusta, Nicosia and Kyrenia. In addition, he distributed 4,000 cavalry men among the localities of Limassol, Kyrenia, and elsewhere. The military forces were complemented by an additional 20,000 decommissioned soldiers and 2,000 cavalry remaining as colonists. These people as a whole formed the original nucleus of the fledgling Turkish Cypriot community whose members were of Turkish origin, and by the firman of Sultan Selim II they were given fiefs for the provision of their homes, and sustenance. Steps were also taken to assist all soldiers with dependents on the mainland to bring their wives and children to Cyprus. Nevertheless, in the opinion of Shinan Pasha, the Baila Bay who replaced Lala Mustafa Pasha, the island was still heavily in need not only of more residents in general but also of skilled craftsmen. Consequently, after he informed Sultan Selim II of the island's condition, a firman was issued to the Cadiz from various regions of Anatolia calling for a population transfer. In order to assure the effective development of the island, those individuals sent to Cyprus were, as part of the relocation program, screened as to their moral integrity, two witnesses being required to testify to their character. In addition, efforts were made to obtain craftsmen representing a wide range of skills known to be of short supply on the island. Special attention was given primarily to relocating farmers. These were supplemented by some shoemakers, tailors, weavers, makers of linen skull caps, spinners, cooks, farriers, tanners, masons, jewelers, coppersmiths, and miners. By 1777 to 1788 the Muslim population constituted the majority on the island, with 40,000 Muslim Turks and 37,000 Christian Greeks. In 1788 to 1792 Turks were estimated at 45,000 compared to 40,000 Greeks. 
The use of resettlement as a general method for development of the Turkish population of Cyprus continued intermittently until the middle of the 18th century. At the time of the British arrival in Cyprus in 1878 under the Cyprus Defence Alliance between Great Britain and the Ottoman Empire, approximately 95,000 Turkish Cypriots were residing on the island. British period, by 1878, during the Congress of Berlin, under the terms of the Anglo-Ottoman Cyprus Convention, the Ottoman Turks had agreed to assign Cyprus to Britain to occupy and rule, though not to possess as sovereign territory. According to the first British census of Cyprus, in 1881, 95% of the island's Muslims spoke Turkish as their mother tongue. As of the 1920s, the percentage of Greek-speaking Muslims had dropped from 5%, in 1881, to just under 2% of the total Muslim population. During the opening years of the 20th century Ottomanism became an ever more popular identity held by the Cypriot Muslim intelligentsia, especially in the wake of the Young Turk Revolution of 1908. Increasing numbers of young Turks who had turned against Sultan Abdul Hamid II sought refuge in Cyprus. A rising class of disgruntled intellectuals in the island's main urban centers gradually began to warm to the ideas of positivism, freedom and modernization. Spurred on by the rising calls for enosis, the union with Greece, emanating from Greek Cypriot nationalists, an initially hesitant tikism was also starting to appear in certain newspaper articles and to be heard in the political debates of the local intelligentsia of Cyprus. In line with the changes introduced in the Ottoman Empire after 1908, the curricula of Cyprus's Muslim schools, such as the Idadi, were also altered to incorporate more secular teachings with increasingly Turkish nationalist undertones. Many of these graduates in due course ended up as a teachers in the growing number of urban and rural schools that had begun to proliferate across the island by the 1920s. In 1914 the Ottoman Empire joined the First World War against the Allied forces and Britain annexed the island. Cyprus's Muslim inhabitants were officially asked to choose between adopting either British nationality or retaining their Ottoman subject status. About 4,000 a year 8,500 Muslims decided to leave the island and move to Turkey. Following its defeat in World War I, the Ottoman Empire were faced with a Greco-Turkish war whereby the Greek incursion into Anatolia aimed at claiming what Greece believed to be historically Greek territory. For the Ottoman Turks of Cyprus, already fearing the aims of Enosis seeking Greek Cypriots, reports of atrocities committed in Anatolia, and the Greek occupation of Smyrna, produced further fears for their own future. Greek forces were routed in 1922 under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal at Hata I Quarter Akehu, in 1923, proclaimed the new Republic of Turkey and renounced irredentist claims to former Ottoman territories beyond the Anatolian heartland. Muslims in Cyprus were thus excluded from the nation-building project, though many still heeded Atata one quarter Akei's call to join in the establishment of the new nation-state, and opted for Turkish citizenship. Between 1881 and 1927 approximately 30,000 Turkish Cypriots emigrated to Turkey. The 1920s was to prove a critical decade in terms of stricter ethno-religious compartments. Hence, Muslim Cypriots who remained on the island gradually embraced the ideology of Turkish nationalism due to the impact of the Kemalist revolution. At its core were the Kemalist values of secularism, modernization and westernization. Reforms such as the introduction of the new Turkish alphabet, adoption of western dress and secularization, were adopted voluntarily by Muslim Turkish Cypriots who had been prepared for such changes not just by the Tanzimat but also by several decades of British rule. Many of those Cypriots who until then had still identified themselves primarily as Muslims began now to see themselves principally as Turks in Cyprus. By 1950, a Cypriot Enosis referendum in which 95.7% of Greek Cypriot voters supported a fight aimed at Enosis, the union of Cyprus with Greece was led by an armed organization, in 1955, called EOKA by Georgios Grivers which aimed at bringing down British rule and uniting the island of Cyprus with Greece. Turkish Cypriots had always reacted immediately against the objective of Enosis. Thus, the 1950s saw many Turkish Cypriots who were forced to flee from their homes. In 1958, 
Turkish Cypriots set up their own armed group called Turkish Resistance Organization and by early 1958, the first wave of armed conflict between the two communities began. A few hundred Turkish Cypriots left their villages and quarters in the mixed towns and never returned. 1960 Present A united Cyprus gained independence from British rule in August 1960, after both Greek and Turkish Cypriots agreed to respectively abandon plans for Enosis and Taksim. The agreement involved Cyprus being governed under a constitution which apportioned cabinet posts, parliamentary seats and civil service jobs on an agreed ratio between the two communities. Within three years, tensions between the Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots in administrative affairs began to show. In particular, disputes over separate municipalities and taxation created a deadlock in government. In 1963 President Makarios proposed unilateral changes to the constitution, via 13 amendments. Turkey and the Turkish Cypriots rejected the proposed amendments, claiming that this was an attempt to settle constitutional disputes in favor of the Greek Cypriots and as a means of demoting Turkish status from co-founders of the state to one of minority status removing their constitutional safeguards in the process. Turkish Cypriots filed a lawsuit against the 13 amendments in the Supreme Constitutional Court of Cyprus. Makarios announced that he would not comply with whatever the decision of the SCCC would be, and defended his amendments as being necessary to resolve constitutional deadlocks as opposed to the stance of the SCCC. On April 25, 1963, the SCCC decided that Makarios' 13 amendments were illegal. The Cyprus Supreme Court's ruling found that Makarios had violated the constitution by failing to fully implement its measures and that Turkish Cypriots had not been allowed to return to their positions in government without first accepting the proposed constitutional amendments. On May 21, the president of the SCCC resigned due to the Makarios stance. On July 15, Makarios ignored the decision of the SCCC. After the resignation of the president of the SCCC, the SCCC ceased to exist. The Supreme Court of Cyprus was formed by merging the SCCC and the High Court of Cyprus and undertook the jurisdiction and powers of the SCCC and HCC. On November 30, Makarios legalized the 13 proposals. In 1963, the Greek Cypriot wing of the government created the Akratis plan which outlined a policy that would remove Turkish Cypriots from the government and ultimately lead to union with Greece. The plan stated that if the Turkish Cypriots objected then they should be violently subjugated before foreign powers could intervene. On December 21, 1963, a Turkish Cypriot crowd clashed with the plainclothes special constables of Yorgagis. Almost immediately, Intercommunal violence broke out with a major Greek Cypriot paramilitary attack upon Turkish Cypriots in Nicosia and Larnaca. Though the TMT a Euro a Turkish resistance group created in 1959 to promote a policy of taxum, in opposition to the Greek Cypriot nationalist group EOKA and its advocacy of Enosis a Euro committed a number of acts of retaliation. Historian of the Cyprus conflict Keith Carl noted that there is no doubt that the main victims of the numerous incidents that took place during the next few months were Turks. 700 Turkish hostages, including women and children, were taken from the northern suburbs of Nicosia. Nico Sampson, a nationalist and future coup leader, led a group of Greek Cypriot irregulars into the mixed suburb of Omorfita and attacked the Turkish Cypriot population. By 1964, 193 Turkish Cypriots and 133 Greek Cypriots had been killed, with a further 209 Turks and 41 Greeks missing and presumed dead. Turkish Cypriot members of the government had by now withdrawn, creating an essentially Greek Cypriot administration in control of all institutions of the state. After the partnership government collapsed, the Greek Cypriot-led administration was recognized as the legitimate government of the Republic of Cyprus at the stage of the debates in New York in February 1964. In September 1964, Thena Euro United Nations Secretary-General, Uthant reported on FISP carried out a detailed survey of all damage to properties throughout the island during the disturbances. It shows that in 109 villages, most of them Turkish Cypriot or mixed villages, 
527 houses have been destroyed while 2,000 others have suffered damage from looting. Widespread looting of Turkish Cypriot villages prompted 20,000 refugees to retreat into armed enclaves, where they remained for the next 11 years, relying on food and medical supplies from Turkey to survive. Turkish Cypriots formed paramilitary groups to defend the enclaves, leading to a gradual division of the island's communities into two hostile camps. The violence had also seen thousands of Turkish Cypriots attempt to escape the violence by emigrating to Britain, Australia and Turkey. On December 28, 1967, the Turkish Cypriot Provisional Administration was founded. On July 15, 1974, the Greek military junta of 1967-1974 and the Cypriot National Guard backed a Greek Cypriot military coup d'a copyright tat in Cyprus. Proenosis Nico Samson replaced President Makarios as the new dictator. The Greek Cypriot coupists proclaimed the establishment of the Hellenic Republic of Cyprus. Turkey claimed that under the 1960 Treaty of Guarantee, the coup was sufficient reason for military action to protect the Turkish Cypriot populace, and thus Turkey invaded Cyprus on July 20. Turkish forces proceeded to take over the northern four elevenths of the island. The coup caused a civil war filled with ethnic violence, after which it collapsed and Makarios returned to power during the Turkish invasion of the island. The Turkish conquerors led to many atrocities. Result of the invasion were missing persons refugees in the division of Ireland. On August 2, 1975, in the negotiations in Vienna, a population exchange agreement was signed between community leaders Ralph Dunkai and Glathkos Clarides under the auspices of the United Nations. On the basis of the agreement, 196,000 Greek Cypriots living in the north were exchanged for 42,000 Turkish Cypriots living in the south. The Orthodox Greek Cypriots in Riza Carpeso, Agios Andronikos and Agia Triada chose to stay in their villages, as did also Catholic Moronites in Asimatos, Carpazia and Kormakitis. Approximately 1,500 Greek Cypriots and 500 Turkish Cypriots remain missing. In 1975, the Turkish Federated State of Cyprus was declared as a first step towards a future Federated Cypriot State, but was rejected by the Republic of Cyprus and the United Nations. After eight years of failed negotiations with the leadership of the Greek Cypriot community, the North unilaterally declared its independence on November 15, 1983 under the name of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. This was rejected by the UN and the Republic of Cyprus. In 2010, the International Court of Justice ruled, in an opinion regarding Kosovo, that international law contains no prohibition on declarations of independence. In recent years, the politics of reunification has dominated the island's affairs. The European Union decided in 2000 to accept Cyprus as a member, even if it was divided. This was due to their view of Ralph Dunkai, the pro-independence Turkish Cypriot president, as the main stumbling block, but also due to Greece threatening to block Eastern EU expansion. It was hoped that Cyprus's planned accession into the European Union would act as a catalyst towards a settlement. In the time leading up to Cyprus becoming a member, a new government was elected in Turkey and Ralph Dunkai lost political power in Cyprus. In 2004, a United Nations a Euro brokered peace settlement was presented in a referendum to both sides. The proposed settlement was opposed by both the president of Cyprus, Tassos Papadopoulos and Turkish Cypriot President Ralph Dunkai. In the referendum, while 65% of Turkish Cypriots accepted the proposal, 76% of Greek Cypriots rejected it. As a result, Cyprus entered the European Union divided, with the effects of membership suspended for northern Cyprus. Dunkai resigned in the wake of the vote, ushering in the pro-solutionist Mehmet Ali Talat as his successor. However, the pro-solutionist side and Mehmet Ali Talat lost momentum due to the ongoing embargo and isolation, despite promises from the European Union that these would be eased. As a result, the Turkish Cypriot electorate became frustrated. This led ultimately to the pro-independent side winning the general elections in 2009 and its candidate, former Prime Minister Dervier Roayu, winning the presidential elections in 2010.
although Aroyo and his National Unity Party favors the independence of northern Cyprus rather than reunification with the Republic of Cyprus, he is negotiating with the Greek Cypriot side towards a settlement for reunification. In 2011, Turkish Cypriots protested against economic reforms made by the northern Cyprus and Turkish governments. Government and Politics the politics of Northern Cyprus takes place in a framework of a semi-presidential representative democratic republic, whereby the president is head of state and the prime minister head of government, and of a multi-party system. Executive power is exercised by the government. Legislative power is vested in both the government and the assembly of the republic. The judiciary is independent of the executive and the legislature. The president is elected for a five-year term. The current president is Dervi Aroayu and the current prime minister is Azedkan Yorganka plus or minus Oayu. The legislature is the Assembly of the Republic, which has 50 members elected by proportional representation from five electoral districts. In the elections of July 2013, the left-leaning pro-unification Republican Turkish Party won an overall majority. Due to northern Cyprus isolation and heavy reliance on Turkish support, Turkey has a high level of influence over the country's politics. This has led to some experts characterizing it as an effective puppet state of Turkey. Few political decisions in northern Cyprus are taken without the approval of the Turkish National Security Council in Ankara. International Status and Foreign Relations No nation other than Turkey has officially recognized northern Cyprus as a sovereign state. The United Nations recognizes it as territory of the Republic of Cyprus under Turkish occupation. Pakistan and Bangladesh had initially declared their recognition of northern Cyprus as a sovereign state shortly after its declaration of independence, however they withdrew their recognition as a result of U.S. pressure after the U.N. having deemed the North Cypriot declaration illegal. The United Nations considers the declaration of independence by northern Cyprus as legally invalid, as enunciated in several of its resolutions. In the wake of the April 2004 referendum on the United Nations Anan Plan, and in view of the support of the Turkish Cypriot community for the plan, the European Union made pledges towards ending the isolation of northern Cyprus. These included measures for trade and €259 million Euro in aid. A pledge by the EU to lift the embargo on northern Cyprus in the wake of the Annan Plan referendums has been blocked by the Greek Cypriot government. In 2004, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation upgraded the delegation of the Turkish Cypriot Muslim community from observer community to that of a constituent state with the designation Turkish Cypriot State, making northern Cyprus an observer member of the organization. A number of high-profile formal meetings have also taken place between former President Mehmet Ali Talat and various foreign leaders and politicians including the former U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, the then-British Foreign Minister, Jack Straw and former Pakistani President Pervez Musharraf, and between President Dervis Iraglu and Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations. In 2004, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe gave observer status to the representatives of Turkish Cypriot community. Since then, Northern Cyprus's representatives have actively participated in all PACE activities without voting rights. The European Union considers the area not under effective control of the Republic of Cyprus as EU territory under Turkish military occupation and thus indefinitely exempt from EU legislation until a settlement has been found. The status of northern Cyprus has become a recurrent issue especially during the recent talks for Turkey's membership of the EU where the division of the island is seen as a major stumbling block in Turkey's road to membership. The Autonomous Republic of Nakhichevan in Azerbaijan has issued a resolution recognizing the independence of northern Cyprus. As a result of the Nagorno-Karabakh issue, however, Azerbaijan itself has not recognized North Cyprus. Naturalized citizens of Northern Cyprus or foreigners carrying a passport stamped by Northern Cyprus authorities may be refused entry by the Republic of Cyprus or Greece, although after the accession of the Republic of Cyprus to the EU such restrictions have been eased following confidence-building measures between Athens and Ankara and the partial opening of the UN-controlled line by Northern Cyprus authorities. The Republic of Cyprus also allows passage across the Green Line from the south of Nicosia, 
as well as a few other selected crossing points, since Northern Cyprus does not leave entry stamps in the passport for such visits. There are seven border crossings between Northern Cyprus and the Republic of Cyprus. Since May 2004 some tourists have taken to flying to the Republic of Cyprus directly then are crossing the Green Line to holiday in Northern Cyprus. On February 18, 2008, the Northern Cyprus government sent a message to the Republic of Kosovo congratulating it on its unilateral declaration of independence. The government spokesman clarified that this statement did not constitute, or signal an imminent move toward, formal diplomatic recognition of Kosovo. In contrast, the Republic of Cyprus has rejected Kosovo's declaration of independence and, given the ICJ ruling that Kosovo's declaration of independence was not illegal, stated that Kosovo and Northern Cyprus were not analogous situations. Some analysts have argued that the independence of Kosovo could provide support for the recognition of Northern Cyprus. On September 21, 2011, Turkey and Northern Cyprus signed an EEZ border agreement in New York. In October 2011, Libya signed cooperation treaties with TRNC government. In October 2012, Northern Cyprus became an observer member of the Economic Cooperation Organization under the name Turkish Cypriot State. Military The Security Forces Command consists of a 9,000-strong force primarily made up of conscripted Turkish Cypriot males between the ages of 18 and 40. There is also an additional reserve force which consists of about 10,000 first-line and 16,000 second-line troops conscripted up to the age of 50. The Security Forces Command is lightly armed and heavily dependent on its mainland Turkish allies, from which it draws much of its officer corps. It is led by a brigadier general drawn from the Turkish army. It acts essentially as a gendarmerie charged with protection of the border of northern Cyprus from Greek Cypriot incursions and maintaining internal security within northern Cyprus. In addition, the mainland Turkish Armed Forces maintains the Cyprus Turkish Peace Force which consists of around 30 Euro 40,000 troops drawn from the 9th Turkish Army Corps and comprising two divisions, the 28th and 39th. It is equipped with a substantial number of US-made M48 Patton main battle tanks and artillery weapons. The Turkish Air Force, Turkish Navy and Turkish Coast Guard also have a presence in northern Cyprus. Although formerly part of Turkish 4th Army, headquartered in a degrees mir, the sensitivities of the Cyprus situation means that the commander of the Cyprus Turkish Peace Force also reports directly to the Turkish General Staff in Ankara. The Cyprus Turkish Peace Force is deployed principally along the Green Line and in locations where hostile amphibious landings might take place. The presence of the mainland Turkish military in Cyprus is highly controversial, having been denounced as an illegal occupation force by the Republic of Cyprus and the international community. Several United Nations Security Council resolutions have called on the Turkish forces to withdraw. Administrative Divisions Northern Cyprus is divided into five districts. Bufkor, Gezi Meuza, Gurn, Garwan Quarter Zert and Adigri Skiel. In addition there are further 28 sub-districts divided between the five larger districts. 